Welcome to In Focus. I'm your host, Jasmine Alvarez. Today we have David Francisco, a singer, songwriter, music producer, inspirational speaker, and author. In addition to his many talents, David has overcome an injury that left him paralyzed from the waist down. But he uses his experience to motivate others and shares his life through the sound of music. Today, we celebrate his work. Without further ado, welcome to the show. Thank so you so good to much. have you. Great to be here. I'm so glad that you're here. So, David, I wanted to talk about your musical journey. And I know you graduated with a BS in electrical engineering mm -hmm. from the University of Tennessee mm -hmm. um, and attended the Blackbird Academy in Nashville as well. So can you tell us a little bit more about those early experiences? Yeah, well, it's interesting because you would not look at me and think, OK, this guy is like an electrical engineer. Right. But I, you know, it was back in my short hair days. <laughs> I was in engineering school back in Tennessee, where I'm from, mm -hmm. and I, I actually finished, I graduated. Uh, but the whole time I was in school, I was kind of doing music in the evenings, and mm -hmm. I formed a band with some friends I made in the choir, yeah. and I recorded an album for us. So music Very was cool. kind of always there, despite yeah. the engineering. I just didn't want to do music school. I thought like, well, let's get a degree, yeah. and kind of at the prompting of my parents as well. Let's right. get a degree that I can use for something. If music doesn't work out, Music always seemed like this, uh, you can't make a career out of it, but right. it's a great hobby. Mm. And so then, after engineering school, uh, there was about a two year period where I, I was like, man, I like college, but I don't like engineering. Mm. And so after the college part, the fun, the friends, the social part left, I was like, man, I don't think I wanna do engineering. Yeah. So I just set up a home studio and I recorded projects for indie artists in Knoxville, wow. Tennessee for about two years. Made a living, I was playing in bands, I was playing at a church and wow, I made ends cool. meet. Uh, rent was also $400 a month, mm. so it wasn't that hard to make ends meet. Yeah. Um, but after two years of that, and this is where Blackbird comes in, I had actually found this program, Blackbird Academy, mm -hmm because I wanted to take the recording skills to the next level. So mm -hmm. I ended up moving to Nashville for the six month program where they would teach me how to be an incredible audio engineer. I mean, wow. Justin Bieber, Taylor Swift have recorded at the studio yeah. in Nashville. They have the best gear, mm -hmm. like great professors, and wow. it's very hands-on. So we'd be in the studios recording. And so I went to that school uh, short, I guess two years after yeah. electrical engineering school. Wow, yeah. that's amazing. Do you think that electrical engineering helped at all in terms of your music career? Did it inspire or, you know, because we hear about having different backgrounds, but that creates uniqueness, right? Yeah. So do you think that contributed contributed to you at all? Yeah, uh, yeah okay. I would say that it is given me a technical problem solving skill set that I that. use. I mean, obviously I'm not looking at circuit boards mm -hmm. while I'm doing music, right. but uh, I understand how the electricity kind of works, right. but more importantly, the problem solving skills, mm, I think were the most awesome. useful thing. That's great. Yeah. And what is it about engineering and producing that really intrigued you? Hmm. Gosh, I think really, really music production, because engineering i like the concepts mm -hmm. they're fun but i was never super like into mm -hmm. electrical engineering yeah more the producing i think there was just something exciting about being able to record a sound and have it and listen to it later I, yeah. yeah i just i just love that and it's so funny because i've been recording since high school in my dad's little home studio setup yeah. that i'm just it's part of my life now and so even spoiler alert, having a kid now, yeah. um, and not having as much time to do it, I miss it. Because mm -hmm. it's like the first time mm -hmm. that I've had like quite a bit of space from right. recording, so I had long to go out to the studio mm -hmm. now. And yeah. so, um, yeah, it's just being able to capture those, uh, those memories and get good sound that makes right. you feel something. It, that promotes, right, something, a feeling that 100%. evokes that. Yeah, I 100%. totally get that. So let's talk about your biographical short film, mm. um, Back to Blackbird. If you don't mind, could you tell us about the incident that inspired the film? Right, so uh, where I left off earlier with Blackbird Academy, mm -hmm. you know, that epic studio, yeah. uh, was that I went to the school in April of 2016, mm -hmm. and three weeks later, I'm biking home from class, and I'm the, the last light, the last intersection turns green before I get to my apartment, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, class is going great, I'm having a good time. I start going across this intersection, I'm beside an SUV, well, the SUV slams on their brakes because there was a car that wasn't stopping at the light that ended up T-boning me on my bicycle at about 35 miles an hour. Uh, oh. My arm smashed into the windshield. I got a scar here that I can show you guys later. 
right up there. Um, mm. But also my bike flew over the car. Wow. Uh, I had a helmet on, thank the Lord, because I would not be alive or talking to you all yeah. today had it not been for that helmet. Yeah. I actually forgot it when I moved to Nashville. Wow. Remembered it three days before the crash when I was at home. So that's that's a crazy story. Yeah. Uh, but long story short, the worst of all my injuries, despite yeah. the helmet, despite everything, was when I landed or when I hit the car, my spine was broken. Um, completely, se well, they thought severed uh, from the first x-ray, actually. Wow. Um, but, but I woke up in the hospital, and the first thing I thought, are, why are my legs off the bed? And I looked down, mm -hmm. there's my legs on the bed, but I couldn't feel them and I couldn't move them. Wow. And so that was the first time that I knew something serious had happened. Like, that's not, I should feel those on the bed, right? Mm -hmm. So, right. yeah, it was a long journey from that point. I, I ended up doing about eight months of full-time physical therapy. Mm -hmm. They told me I would never walk again. Mm -hmm. And so I'm thinking, well, first of all, how am I gonna get back to the audio school, but more importantly, like how am I even gonna live an independent life? I mean, right. I'm dependent on these nurses 24 seven just to take care of me. Mm -hmm. And then the worst thought of all was, how am I ever gonna be in a relationship? Mm -hmm. I was single at the time and wanted to be in a relationship someday, but how could I ask someone to sacrifice so much yeah. when I feel like all I was was a burden? And mm -hmm. that wasn't true, but yeah. that's how I felt at the time. Right. And so in the early days, it was really people that sustained me. I had over a hundred visitors in the hospital that just came and encouraged me, like we're wow. with you in this. And so something I tell people a lot now is actually um, just being present for someone who's struggling, being present if they're suffering. Do, you don't have to put a silver lining on it. Mm -hmm. You can just be there and say, I'm with you in the pain, yeah. and in the sadness. And so mm -hmm. that's something that I learned experientially through that, right. uh, through that experience. And wow. so that's something I tell people, but yeah, that's, that was kind of the lowest of lows. No movement, mm -hmm. no relationships. How am I going to get back to music? Yeah. From there, it was just, I mean, I could keep, I keep talking all day if right. you want. Uh, but yeah. basically, it was a long journey of no movement. And then about a month in, mm -hmm. I kind of started seeing a, my foot move. Right. I'm like, oh, okay, like something's moving. There's, yeah, there's um, action happening. <laughs> some movement started coming back. Mm -hmm. My other foot could move. And mm -hmm. so if our motto was, if it moves, put a weight on it. And so oh, that's what we nice. did. Uh, it was like, the most intense therapy of my life, the most intense mm -hmm. workouts. And I played soccer growing up, and so I, I would like run and work out a lot. Right. But um, this was just next level because from the first one, you're already fatigued. Like yeah. one step, you're already totally fatigued. Right. Um, so it was a lot of hard work, and it was kind of like, you know, the caveman to like mm -hmm. human pictures. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. wheelchair, for, uh, rolling walker, yeah. forearm crutches, canes, yeah and then Kane and now nothing as you saw today. Yeah, I so know, you've come such a long way. Yeah, it took about yeah. a year or a year and a half. I mean, it's been seven years now, mm -hmm. so I'm still getting stronger, yeah. but yeah, that's kind of that's the awesome. the short story of a very long trajectory right. that I wrote an entire book about. Right, so. and it inspired the film as well, right? Yeah, I'm sure. so, so what happened was eight months after my recovery, mm -hmm. after the injury and full-time recovery, mm -hmm. I uh, the, the Blackbird Academy, offered me a full ride to come back. Wow. And so we we made this documentary, my dad, who's like my functional manager oh, and, wow. and just my biggest cheerleader, um, just has this vision, he's, he's amazing, he has this vision to like do a documentary style wow. film. And so we put together like some great filmmakers we knew in Knoxville, put together this film interviewing people that were part of the journey and uh, made a film called Back to Blackbird, going back to Blackbird Academy, mm -hmm. right? So I ended up, you know, putting that out and doing a big concert in my hometown mm -hmm. for like 700 people and wow. showing the film. And I came out on stage just weeping because it's like such an overwhelming right. moment where we debut this film and all mm -hmm. these people supporting. And so yeah. that was, uh, that's kind of the backstory of Back to Blackbird, which wow. uh, it's fun because it, we put it out on YouTube and it like mm -hmm. did nothing. And then I guess somehow it hit the algorithm a bit because now it's yeah. like, almost 400,000 views wow. or something. So and more to come, I'm yeah, sure of it. Yeah, more to come. Yeah, so. that's amazing. Yeah. Wow, so you returned back to Blackbird, Acad Blackbird Academy after your accident and when you graduated in 2017, and then you graduated, pardon me. Um, why do you think it was so important for you to go back and finish your training there? Why do mm. you think that was a, a key part for you? Well, it symbolized my not being stopped by mm. what had happened to me. And that's something I tell people now is you, 
you know, things happen to you. Um, we're all maybe at some point in our lives victims of something. Mm -hmm. um, and so the question is, how are we going to respond? And that's something that right. I, I think is, you know, we can have a victim mentality. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of times it's justified, right? right. Like, yeah. it was not even my fault. She ran the red light, T-boned me. Mm -hmm. um, I was a victim of a car crash. Right. But if I treated myself that way, then I wouldn't have gone as hard in therapy. Right. I wouldn't have forgiven her, which is a whole different story. Right. Uh, but I would have been like resentful and angry right. and trying to get back at her and ruin her mm -hmm. life, the, the girl who T-boned me and paralyzed me that day. Mm -hmm. And so because I didn't spend all that energy towards like resentment and hatred mm -hmm. and being a victim, I was able to recover much more so than I would have right. otherwise. That's great. That's amazing. Yeah. And I'm glad that you are focusing on responding, right? Yeah. Responding yeah. in a different way. It's that's in amazing. focus. Yeah, that's the main focus. In focus. <laughs> so <sorry. laughs> I'm a dad now. What can I say? <laughs> I love it. Keep them coming. Keep them coming. Yeah. Um, so how has your road to re recovery been? I know you mentioned, mm -hmm. you know, the physical therapy and it was intensive, some of the hardest moments in your life. Um, do you think, however, that that time in physical therapy um, and physical recovery impacted your music mm. um, negatively or positively? Do you think it yeah. gave you any different perspective or time? Well, um, I, <laughs> it's funny because being known as like a musician amongst yeah. your friends and family, mm -hmm. it's like, oh, I bet you're like writing a lot. I bet you're, I'm like, dude, I'm just sitting <laughs> in my bed, like doing therapy and watching Mulan. That's yeah. it. Like, <laughs> I'm not trying right. to change the world yet, but mm -hmm. I did end up starting to write more and more songs, mm -hmm. you know, as the months went on and ended up with Lionheart, which is an album and this book, which is kind of the story of 2016 yeah. to 2018 or so yeah. uh, for me of just recovering um, and what's interesting is each uh, so it's an album and mm -hmm. each song is a chapter in the in the book so i tried to wow. make it chronological That's so it's amazing. like a, a what's it called like a sing along sing kind of, read along you yeah. read the you read the <laughs> chapter you listen to the song yeah. you read the next and then the audiobook i actually narrate the wow. whole thing and really? then you hear the song. Wow. So, yeah, it's so was, immersive. It's interesting. Yeah. I, I don't think anyone's ever done that that I've heard of. Yeah, so, yeah. So, you know, it's a fun That's project. very cool. It was, a, it was a fun project and cathartic, you know. Mm -hmm. I would wake up and just kind of write every day. Yeah. And I was never an author. Yeah. But, like, you know what? I'm going to write a book. If I can survive a spinal cord injury, I can write a book. Why yeah. not? Why can't I write a I book? I love that. El no, ya lo tenemos, right? I, exactly. We may as well write a book. <laughs> That's inside true. Jail. That's <laughs> true. I love yeah. that. Um, so what made you decide to move to California and mm. did you feel like that was an important decision for your career? So the question is not what made me decide, but who made me decide? Oh. Well, remember, I oh. thought that I would never be in a relationship and right. actually because of, and this is what's beautiful, is it's not in spite of the injury, but mm -hmm. because of the injury, wow. I got invited to California two times within a month of each other. Wow. This is, I had only been to California once or twice in my mm -hmm. life. So I get invited in August of 2016 to a, uh, an event called the Pensado Awards, which is like music industry. Wow. Uh, basically, Blackbird spread the news that one of their students was injured. Yeah. And so these people wanted to encourage me. They have That's this amazing. amazing show called Pensado's Place. And so I come out, I go on stage, and it's all exciting and everything. Mm -hmm. Well, to back up just a bit, one time I met this girl who was from California at a show in Tennessee yeah. who was a mutual friend of mine. Turns out my mutual friend gave her one of my first EPs ever, wow. and she would listen to it out here in California every day. It was like her way oh, of healing wow. from a relationship that was mm -hmm. like going south. So she hears about the injury from that friend just a month after I met her, wow. and she ends up writing me some of the most encouraging letters that I wow. received in the hospital. Yeah. This girl I met one time. Mm. What? And so anyways, I ended up coming out here four months after the letter and being like, oh my gosh, that girl. I, I never properly thanked her. Like, I should yeah. see if she's around. And I thought L.A. was, Orange County was all of it. Yeah. And I'm in Culver City and I'm like, hey, I'm coming to L.A. And she's mm. in Anaheim Hills. But she ended up coming up to Culver <laughs> City for wow, coffee the amazing. next morning after that event. Yeah. And so we, we caught up like old friends. Again, this person I met one time. Yeah. I'm still full-time wheelchair, not yeah. trying to make any moves. Mm -hmm. Literally just like, this just girl was really up. sweet. Yeah. Like, I like to have friends and mm. around the world. 
And so anyways, <laughs> we, yeah, we caught up and then my dad comes down, inserts himself into the conversation. <laughs> I'm still traveling with both my parents at yeah. this point. Mm -hmm. And so uh, he invites her to a music festival in San Diego oh, called the Kaboo wow. Festival the next uh -huh. month. And so she's like, oh, I've never been to a music festival. So she ends up coming to this music festival nice. with us, pushing me aw around in the wheelchair mm. and learns the world of disability. And we, wow. we have real talk, like, how do you go to the bathroom? Well, it's different, let me tell you. Yeah. And how, okay, great. And so An it was- An important conversation. Yeah, yeah. You know, it was like, yeah. I'm, just, I'm just amazed because this girl is totally unfazed mm. by the fact that I'm in a wheelchair. I'm like, yeah. This girl's crazy, but like I'm also <laughs> trying not to get my hopes up or anything because right. I'm trying to protect myself mm -hmm. emotionally. I'm already so fragile because like I've been crying every right. day almost for the past yeah. three, four months. Mm -hmm. So I end up basically we start texting more and more, and then she's got to figure out like what you know what is this, and so right. she flies to Tennessee. And then I play her a song that I wrote for her. Aww, so that's and, amazing. You know, maybe I'll pivot. I was going to play one song. Maybe I'll play that song. If yeah, you know. whichever you choose. Maybe I'm glad so. to hear anything. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, so it was, it was again, because yeah. of the injury that I got invited mm -hmm. out here to reconnect with this girl. Her name's Christy. Well, after the time she came to Tennessee, I was like, this is definitely my future wife. This is yeah. ridiculous. And so we long distance dated for seven months. Wow. I finished the audio school and all of these things that I thought were gone forever are yeah. coming back tenfold. Like, wow. oh my gosh, I'm going to the audio school. I've made crazy music connections because of mm -hmm. the injury. And I met this girl and now I'm going to California. Like, yeah. you know, and I believe in God and I say God is a God of redemption yes. because it's like mm -hmm. broken things being turned into such a beautiful thing right, right? Yeah. like something that i could never have even like dreamed of so right. that's, that's kind true. of how i moved to california to answer your question wow i love that yeah. that's great though it's yeah. a great reason to move to california 100 <laughs> percent. so um what do you think the music scene is like in california comparison to tennessee i know there's a big mm. music scene over there too but what does it come how does it compare hot take for everyone <laughs> uh i like it better out here Okay. And so, and the reason is because mm -hmm. I feel like in Nashville, you hire the best musicians, mm -hmm. you use the fancy equipment, you play the right parts, and you get the sound. Mm. And to me, it's just kind of boring. Like, yeah. okay, I knew there was going to be a fill there, and it was going to be a great riff. Mm -hmm. But like, I want to hear something interesting. And oh, so when I, I moved out that. here, I didn't even know how to use samples, which are, you know, it's like right. using like the sound of a bird and mm -hmm. like put it in the song. And so creating textures and like yeah. layering things and playing things that are different. I mm -hmm. think that that really has sparked my interest since being out here in yeah. California. And, and pretty much everyone I work with is in L.A. If you're in Orange County, please say hey. I'd love to work with you. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, no, yeah. I, I love the production style out here. Mm -hmm. I kind of I landed with indie pop because I like cool. it real instruments. Yeah, I yeah. play guitar, piano, sax, bass drums, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but I love layering those things with some like sampled kicks and wow. different different yeah. synth bases and that's things. That's amazing. So. I love that you said you like to add texture and dynamic mm. to the music. Mm -hmm. That's that's awesome. 100%. Let's reverse a piano and see yeah. what happens. Wow. And, yeah, very so. cool. That's yeah. very cool. I feel like we're getting an inside scoop into how you oh, think yeah. in terms of pro 100%. producing your music. That's 100%. amazing. That's super awesome. Um, I actually wanted to talk a bit about um, your time in American Idol. You auditioned for American Idol and made it all the way to Hollywood Week. Mm -hmm. um, tell us about your experience. What was that like yeah. for you? I mean, it was, and you're not going to hear this much, but my experience was amazing. Oh, uh, wow. I, yeah, well, I just have a lot of people, friends, who I feel like have been burned from right. reality yeah. TV. Mm -hmm. uh, but for me, it was, they didn't have to sugarcoat or like change my story at all. Right. It was exactly as crazy as they portrayed it. Yeah. I was like the last guy in the episode. I was like the heart story. Mm. And uh, it just, it was like probably 100 million views or something. Yeah. So it's like a lot of exposure. Yeah. I wasn't quite ready for it at the time. Mm -hmm. It was back in 2018, mm -hmm. the first season with Katy Perry, Lionel Richie, yeah, Luke Bryan. Yeah. But uh, it was such a great experience. I met so many friends. And so it was like right before I moved out here too, mm -hmm. I knew some people when I came out here. It was wow, great. So, so cool. loved my experience, made it to Hollywood. Didn't expect to make it all the way. I have a fine yeah. voice, but I'm not like the singer. Like I'm not doing all the riffs. <laughs> no way. So, yeah. So it was it was super fun. Mm. A great experience for me. And 
Yeah, would do it. Well, now that I've done it, I would do it a first time again. Again, yes. I love that. Hundred <laughs> percent. But that's awesome, and I'm glad that's an experience that you were able to to have. You yeah, know, within your career, that's for sure. amazing. For sure. Um, so, alongside your own music, you've produced for some other growing musicians, such as Maddie Zam, Alexa Capelli, and Sophia James. Um, what goes into these collaborations and what is it like to work alongside these other artists? Yeah, well, it's funny because I feel like I've always wanted to be a producer primarily and then an artist second and then the whole spinal cord injury and all the national yeah. TV stuff happened. We were on the Ellen Show too. Wow. And so like all this stuff was happening. I'm like, well, I may as well like do some of my own music. Yeah. And I love writing songs for myself mm -hmm. too. So, uh, but I never had enough of like a, I have to be a musician like an artist like a right. touring mm -hmm. um i've always loved the studio and so uh when i when i moved out here i didn't really know anyone other than who i had met on american idol yeah. uh maddie zom was on my season two actually so yeah i i think i met her through some friends wow. on the show uh -huh. um invited her to do a free like a like a cover video in my studio oh wow which is a good way yeah. and this is for anyone like wanting to start a business or anything mm -hmm. this was my entrepreneurial journey was like inviting people to come and do a cover video in the studio i produced tried wow. to make it interesting uh, filmed it, edited yeah. the video, mixed the song. We put it up on Spotify. We put it up on YouTube. They're called Shed wow. Sessions. You can find like 50 of them now. But that nice. was how I met Absolutely. people and got them into the studio. And Maddie was one of the first ones who was like, hey, I would love to like do some of my original music with yeah. you. So that started like a two-year like little sister friendship wow. with her where yeah. like basically now she's signed to a label and like amazing. popping off and I, I got to be along for part of that ride which was just amazing so That's it was amazing. it was super yeah. cool and same with Sophia she's just an amazing artist and yeah. a great friend and so got gotten to see her rise as well oh, we, we awesome. popped off in the philippines for some reason with uh yeah. with the very first song we put out so yeah that's yeah. amazing yeah very cool so you kind of segue you you've gone into music you've done speaking you're even an author i'm mm -hmm. interested in hearing a little bit more about your book lionheart do you care to share yeah. anything about the book with us yeah well like i was saying earlier mm -hmm. it it is kind of tied to the album so right. each chapter is yeah, um yeah is a song title. Yeah. Uh, man, other than just being my story, I tried to like drop a couple nuggets here and there of like, yeah. you know, love keeps us alive and, you know, be present for people who are struggling mm. and don't see yourself as a victim. That's probably the biggest, biggest that. takeaway is, is to yeah. find a purpose in your suffering um, and not to see yourself as a victim. That's so. awesome. That's a great um, a message to be pretty much have, yeah. you know. And uh, well, and it's honestly, I feel like really prevalent today. Yeah. Like we, mm. we, like life is hard sometimes and things are going to be unfair for everybody. Right. And so really, it's not as much about trying to like, like look at how bad my situation is, everyone. It's, I, I think it would be better to say, man, this situation is bad and speak up obviously like mm -hmm. don't just let it continue but also to be like what am I going to do about it yeah how this is I how gonna, I overcame how am I going to move yeah. forward and mm -hmm. you might find more purpose in that journey than you had before the suffering that's, that's true. definitely my story that's true I love that yeah. thank you so much for that of course um before we finish off I did want to say did you want to share any one of your songs with us we'd love to hear anything yeah. that you have with us i know you yeah. brought you play multiple instruments but got you brought the, your guitar so we'd got love the old to guitar hear something. here let's do it this is a song i wrote for christy my wife called she makes me want to sing Haven't told her how I'd lost the hope to love or be a lover. I haven't shown her all the tears I've had to cry to survive. She doesn't see my weakness, she sees a fighter. She doesn't see my prison walls She sees an open field 
She doesn't know that I am nervous To hold a heart like hers And a hand like mine So contagious The way she dances to my songs That sings along It's understated The way she holds me I am tall And strong She doesn't see my weakness She sees a fighter she doesn't see my prison walls She sees an open field She doesn't know that I am nervous But she makes me want to sing Wow, that was so amazing so much again for playing that yeah, of that was such a treat especially with the story that you told us going along with the song that was just amazing thank you so much truly um, and thank you for joining us and thank you to the audience as well for joining and discussing david francisco and his amazing work we also want to thank david for joining us and sharing his inspirational music journey um, we wish him nothing but the best for his career and everything moving forward. Until next time, I'm Jasmine Alvarez, and this has been In Focus.